<clears throat> okay, well, let's get started. Uh, welcome, everyone. This is our fourth and final special um, webinar uh, in preparing for the Datathon next week in Boston. Uh, today, we're going to have uh, two, two groups uh, presenting about their tools and uh, how it, it might be used next week uh, during the Datathon. Um, Dan Weaver from Perkin Elmer will talk about Spotfire, and Raj Martin and Jason Neshelman will be talking about uh, Bioinformatics. Um, this is, as I said, the fourth uh, webinar. The other three have taken place earlier this week and included a uh, training class in the use of uh, Transmart. Uh, we had a second on the, um, the Datathon itself, how it will operate, what our goals are, uh, presented by Keith Elliston and Ken Kubota. Uh, yesterday, uh, we had a webinar from the, the staff at the University of Luxembourg uh, who discussed the several data sets that they've curated uh, and a uh, Parkinson's disease map. Uh, and uh, these three sessions have been recorded and they are up on the website. Uh, and you can review them, or if your colleagues have missed uh, these sessions, uh, you can point them to those webinars and they can watch them. One other quick notice, um, the hotel rooms, uh, we, we did run out of the block, and so we have expanded it, and there are a few extra rooms left. And so if anybody's coming to Boston and would like a room, uh, these are at the Residence Inn, uh, very close to Thomson Reuters, an easy walk. Uh, and uh, these rooms, there should be a couple available yet, and you have until tomorrow uh, to book these rooms. Okay, so uh, I would like to now get started. Uh, our first speaker will be Dan Weaver from Pergen Elmer, and he will talk about Spotfire. Dan, uh, you should be unmuted and be able to um, present your screen. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Rudy. Uh, I don't have the it's button. Uh, no, I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Rudy. Uh, yes. Yeah, so for the next uh, 20, 30 minutes or so, I'm going to walk briefly through uh, the Transmart uh, connector that we've created uh, in conjunction with uh, the Transmart Foundation and the Hive. Uh, this is uh, going uh, through the REST API uh, that is uh, nascent in Transmart 1.2. And I'll go through a few more technical details and then three quick demos. Uh, the intention is for us to show up at the Datathon next week uh, with two or maybe three laptops uh, loaded and ready to go. Uh, I'll probably also prepare it by preparing some of the analyses so we can come in and sit down and start digging into the data together. But there will be time for folks to be, get hands-on with the Transmart connector and with Spotfire next week. Okay. So uh, the brief outline of what I'm going to present for the next uh, little bit. I'm going to talk about you know, a little bit of the background history of the creation of the Transmart connector, a little bit about the architecture and technology that's used, and then uh, go through uh, kind of a bare bones demo of how one would begin, a uh, slightly more advanced demo of building a template, and then finally, uh, probably the most relevant tool for the Datathon next week, which is going to be uh, the Expression Explorer which is a fully packaged workflow for doing gene expression analysis, combining Transmart uh, and Spotfire. So uh, a little background, you know, Perkin Elmer uh, owns the life science franchise as it is for uh, a typical Spotfire, which is, uh, for those who don't know, is a really uh, excellent and very full featured uh, scientific data visualization analysis package. Uh, we uh, began participating in the Transmart community, oh, about two to two and a half years ago, and really uh, kind of amped things up uh, last year as we got serious about uh, building a Transmart connector to Spotfire, and also we've joined um, Transmart as a uh, as a gold member. And so we're really excited about the Datathon next week and starting to get this into more people's hands and figuring out how we can get this uh, more heavily in, uh, ingrained in the community. Uh, to give credit where it's due, uh, it really started with a hackathon uh, in March of last year. Uh, we had uh, the folks from the Hive uh, on site uh, at Waltham, and we had a wonderful three days of just getting uh, down and dirty with the code. And we were able to you know, create very quickly a wonderful uh, POC you know, showing how you, through the REST API that the Hive was uh, heavily involved in building out, uh, we could you know, create a, a nice loosely coupled but tightly integrated s solution between Spotfire and Transmart. Um, this is a, a photo of all of us in the room and our, our uh, <coughs> scrum boards. 
And that turned into uh, the project I'm going to show today. Uh, the first release of this was in August of last year. The, excuse me, the, the first beta release was August of last year. And um, the first actual product release is this year. So at this point, it's fully on the market. It's fully, you know, uh, vetted code and kind of ready to roll. <clears throat> so uh, the technical prerequisites, uh, it is a tool that uh, really only runs because it uses the REST API. It requires uh, Transmart 1.2 or potentially 1.1 with the REST API installed. Um, we are in, you know, uh, discussions with the Hive and some other folks in the community about how to uh, kind of continue to expand upon this um, because right now the strength and the weakness is that kind of the same thing because we're using the REST API and we're not in any way connecting directly to uh, the transfer database we're uh, bounded by what the REST API provides and so one of the things that I'm going to be trying to gather feedback on out of the process next week are some additional really focused feedback for things that could be included in the REST API going forward. You know, using this as simply one of the test cases. It does require Spotfire 6.0 or later, uh, uh, but the deployment for anyone who has a Spotfire server is quite trivial. Uh, it's a standard uh, deployment package of an SPK file. It takes about three minutes to push up. And the Transmart instance is untouched because, again, we're creating a loosely coupled solution. Just to touch a little bit on the technology, uh, for the REST calls, we have created uh, inside Spotfire a really nicely packaged service where uh, the, there is a data source inside Spotfire that will collect the uh, uh, request from the uh, little interface that I'm going to show you in a second, package that up as a REST call, transmit that to Transmart, and then uh, wait for the JSON response, and then uh, parse it and return the correct, you know, uh, basically C-sharp object to the Spotfire interface for doing you know, the work in Spotfire. So it's, uh, for anyone who uh, has used Spotfire in the past, uh, the way we've implemented this is a fully functional um, data source. So it behaves exactly as any kind of data source in Spotfire would, with all the characteristics that come with that, including things like uh, the capacity to do refresh uh, at the push of a button. Um, this is what's done for most of the regular data calls, like the uh, clinical and clinical concepts. Um, it's slightly different for the higher dimensional data, where uh, to pull this data down, because it's coming back from the REST API as a protobuf stream, this is slightly different context, but architecturally they're uh, fairly similar. In this case, one nice thing is that uh, you can watch there's uh, user feedback as the data is being spooled down to the server. Uh, <clears throat> so that as the rows are, are coming in, you can see that things are progressing before it's handed off to uh, Spotfire for visualization. Okay, uh, without further ado, let's shift over to, uh, to the series of demos. The first demo is really gonna start with something very, very clean. To, so folks who are on the call can get a sense of exactly what's going on. Uh, so if I come over to a clean Spotfire instance. So uh, in Spotfire, if you are trying to start fresh, so this is what it looks like in a completely new uh, Spotfire document. Uh, within uh, the menus then we have added a uh, the capacity to do an open from the Transmart data source. And any place inside Spotfire where a data source is accessible, you can uh, now add it from that data source from Transmart. So for example, if I was doing a data table, I could add from here to Transmart as well. So I'll use this as the example. I, <clears throat> Uh, I should begin by disconnecting so I can show you the login. So the very first thing that happens, uh, uh, I apologize. I, I wanted to check things, of course, before I give the demo today. So I've already logged in. So I have a Transmart uh, session. Uh, take my word for it that there is a, um, the, the login that happens when you first connect actually goes through the uh, Transmart uh, login screen. So when uh, a, if I hadn't already created a session, when I <clears throat> open up the Transmart uh, server here, the first thing it does is it puts me, it de detects that I do not currently have a Transmart session and then um, uh, requires that I log in using the OAuth functionality of Transmart. So uh, what we've created here is fully compliant with the security model of Transmart. 
uh, again, because I did testing before the demo today, I can't show that because I already have a Atmalis Transmart session key. <clears throat> okay. So uh, within this, then, the uh, user has shown the list of studies, and within that, they can select a study. And uh, in this version of the uh, Transmart connector, because of the strength of SpotFAR being able to slice and dice data, you know, the decision was made that you know, all the clinical data is, is presented as the all observations. So if I select all observations and say open, this now uh, will create a uh, the rest call that will then go and spool back all the clinical observations. And then within SpotFAR, uh, it's quite easy to do transformations and slicing and dicing of this data. So uh, for anyone, uh, which I would expect to be everyone on this call, uh, who is used to looking at um, at uh, Transmart, you know, the uh, first uh, column here is the label, which is showing the path. Um, and then uh, for uh, each concept path, then there's the value. We also return and divide out whether the value is numeric versus textual. So, and then the rest of this uh, columns are coming back from the, uh, from the rest call as uh, information from the subject table within Transmart. And at some level, this is, you know, shown you know, the full cycle. The uh, first thing that, you know, happens is we pull down all the clinical observations. I'll show you in a moment what that process looks like once it's cleaned up a little bit inside of a SpotFire template. Um, but this is the, the uh, you know, kind of first concept is that within here, it becomes very easy to pull down the uh, clinical observations. And then uh, the next step will be using SpotFire to do the uh, transformations of those data for visualization. Uh, the second piece that's worth pointing out in here is the uh, higher dimensional data types. So within <coughs> Transmart again, if I uh, go back to that uh, study, you'll notice that uh, there are uh, multiple high dimensional uh, data type projections here. And this is you know, directly reflective of the way the data is being presented back uh, from Transmart uh, to an external tool through the REST API. And so, the uh, naming of this comes from the uh, path name and the, the concept name uh, in Transmart, as well as the name of the projection. So in this way, I, as a user, can uh, elect to bring the data down either by the default projection or any of the other projections that are included, like the z-score, the log intensity, or the all data projection. So for this illustration, I'll bring down the default real projection. I'm going <clears> to, <throat> it's named long, which is named after the uh, concept that this is associated with. At this point, uh, the connector is emitting the REST call uh, out to the Transmart server. And then in a moment, <coughs> you'll see it begin uh, spooling the rows in. Uh, this does take a few minutes, because on the Transmart uh, side, it's uh, basically uh, queuing up the data and putting it, uh, packaging it into the protobus stream. <coughs> there it goes. So this shows you or illustrates you know, one of the features I was describing where uh, one nice thing is that the user is getting uh, real-time feedback about uh, you know, how quickly the data is being streamed down. So it helps diagnose that there are issues with like network speed and so forth. Okay. <clears throat> one more minute to complete. This is normally when in a presentation I would ask for questions, but uh, I, I think that this is a one-way communication from the moment. <laughs> While that's downloading, <clears throat> let me go on to the second demo. Uh, so the second demo is more like what will be happening at the Datathon, where uh, we'll come to the table with some uh, examples of how the data can be uh, templatized into an analysis workflow. Uh, I will be present on site to help with some of that work and to help drive some of the analyses of the data, uh, both in part, of course, to help the community, but also for, for me to learn a little bit about you know, things that we should be doing as we're contemplating how to better uh, uh, you know, use Spotfire <coughs> with the Transmart data. So in this example, um, the same initial steps have been performed where the data has been uh, downloaded and brought in. So if I were to pull up a raw data table here, let me just add a page and show you. 
a table uh, looking at the raw data that had been pulled down the all observations table. So in this way, um, this is what I just showed, you know, pulling the data down into its native format. But then within Spotfire, it becomes very easy to uh, perform a whole slew of uh, transformations to clean up these data and make it very easy to uh, visualize them uh, more readily than they come in the, the native REST API call. So in this example, I've taken that same clinical observations table and I've done uh, cleaning up of the, the label names. And so now rather than a full path, you have the correct name for the clinical observation or the clinical concept. And then associated with each of these then is, you know, a kind of a tabulation, which is analogous to the grid view you get out of Transmart. So then within this, let's say I wanted to take this and see a, um, you know, a histogram as an example showing the distribution of age. I can, you know, within Spotfire, switch this to be a um, whisker plot. <clears throat> so now uh, on the uh, y-axis here, I want to see age. And on the x-axis, I want to uh, see here, what am I doing wrong? <clears throat> Oops. So on the... Uh, y-axis, I would be looking at age there, and oh, I know what I'm doing wrong there. Let's, um, instead of doing it in the box and whisker plot, let's uh, do this in a bar chart. <clears throat> and actually, in this particular example, uh, uh, I had not gone and converted that uh, uh, age from a text into a number, so I apologize in this example, it's not going to behave quite right. But uh, in the context of the datathon, we'll be going through those kinds of data curation together. I've also pulled down here the um, gene expression data and done some basic uh, things like transforming it from the, uh, the representations coming out of the REST API into a transform data table where you have each row as a probe and each column is the sample ID, so is the sample, and then doing some simple representations of that where you can see kind of a box and whisker ch uh, chart that is showing the distribution of the gene expression levels and log two values. Uh, within the context of this, one can also do things like normalization of those expression levels and so forth. But uh, again, this is an example of a template that will be worked up uh, after the data has been pulled down from Transmart. And the last couple of examples are things like a principal component analysis. So here, within this example, you know, you have a PCA, and it's been uh, the PCA is showing the categorization or the classification of things in this case by male and female. But I can choose to change this from that male and female to lung disease. <clears throat> choose to add and remove subcategories of lung disease. This allows for a much more interactive experience, uh, and that's really driving at what we view as the strength of combining Transmart uh, with uh, Spotfire. And then lastly, so say within this example of the PCA, there's a, uh, an issue here where you have this one outlier that's really skewing the entire PCA view. Well, within Spotfire, I can easily take that point, uh, remove it from the analysis, and then Spotfire will dynamically kind of recategorize all the data or spread out the data so you can see it better. The same template then could be easily, once it's worked up, easily pointed at a different uh, study within Transmart. Uh, so I don't have to go through this process of building up the template every time. I can work up a set of analytical steps or a set of visualizations of the data that I want to see. And then, um, you know, to replace this is simply a, a matter of going in to one of the data tables. So if I go into one of the data tables, I can you know, change this from being uh, pointing to uh, the current study to pointing to uh, a different study. So in this way, the act of selecting a different study will pull down and replace that data, and then all of the cascading uh, uh, analytical, eh, excuse me, analytical steps will just follow directly from that. Okay. Uh, the third and final demo I'm going to show briefly is uh, in a tool we have called Expression Explorer. Um, this tool does take a little while to run, so I've pre-loaded uh, and pre-run the data. The process of getting the data in is as simple as going into the Tools menu in SiteSpot Fire and selecting uh, that I want to look at OMIC's Office Expression Explorer and, again, load the data for Transmart, and then the rest of this flow looks very, very similar to the flow that's shown before. So this is you know, currently pointed to the, uh, the LONI uh, data set. Uh, there does, you know, it's 
uh, we've got this for testing. It definitely works for reasons that aren't entirely clear. It's performing more slow than it is against the British Telecom site. Uh, so, and there is still some investigation of that going on. Uh, so I'm not going to allow this to complete at the moment. Uh, rather, I'm going to show what the output of the process looks like. So in this process, uh, the data is pulled down, and not not only is it uh, you know uh, sh shown, but it's also a whole series of analyses are kind of performed at the time the data is downloaded automatically. Some example analyses are like uh, the first analysis is looking at sample similarity. So within this, I can uh, take uh, th this histogram, excuse me, this uh, heat map here is showing how similar uh, each of the samples are to each other over the entire portfolio of gene expression data that's been pulled down. In this particular example data set, uh, there are two different regiments that were uh, performed, a CHOP-like regiment and an R-CHOP-like regiment, and this is in a particular cancer study. And um, so uh, what you can see falling out very nicely is the grouping, because uh, this is something that was known from the paper, that the CHOP-like regiment uh, appeared to be very, very different uh, in its expression than the R-CHOP-like regiment. And so that's you know, showing up in terms of the grouping of the samples, the hierarchical clustering of the samples, as well as in the PCA analysis where the CHOP and R-CHOP-like uh, appear to completely separate my PCA. Uh, however, one of the nice things within uh, OMIC's office workflow is, let's say instead of looking at this particular factor, this particular clinical observation, I wanted it to be, say, by uh, any of the other information that had been pulled down, like, for example, disease state. So in this example, the act of changing the factor reorganizes all of the visualizations simultaneously. So when I'm selecting these things, the sample correlation uh, heat map is being reorganized into, in this case, ECOG status, and then the uh, uh, PCA visualizations have now been colored by that. So you get this nice coordinate view of the information. And from a scientist perspective, it's a much more facile workflow than having uh, to go and uh, basically rerun the analysis over and over and over again. We've basically calculated all of these things a priori. Some other good ex examples are to look at, for example, the expression ranks. So uh, if I, you know, right now, the factor that, that was being looked at by default is uh, gender. And so you can see uh, for a given probe, for a given gene, um, what is the you know, top ranked uh, exp you know, gene from the perspective of expression and whether or not it differs uh, between the classes of a particular factor. So changing it from gender to chemotherapy status, excuse me, R1. <clears throat> I can now uh, you know, visualize that and see the uh, genes that were uh, top ranked in CHOP versus LCHOP. And if I scan on this list, I can very easily see where there are differences. You know, here's a really good example of a gene that has a large expression difference between uh, CHOP and LCHOP. Oops. Okay. Next, of course, within gene expression, one wants to look at uh, a volcano plot, uh, visualizing the differences uh, between different categories. And so within this, I can, at the time I'm pulling the data into the analysis, I can define a comparison that I want to have done. In this case, uh, the ABC versus uh, GCB um, categories of this uh, particular uh, disease, B cell lymphoma, and then very easily see you know, what are the uh, top up regulated and top down regulated genes. And so it's showing me a uh, full change, the p values, as well as uh, information about you know, the kind of categorization of those, as well as a chart showing me. As I group these samples by the uh, factor that's been uh, analyzed on, I can very clearly see you know, the differences in expression level between AB, uh, ABC and GBC. So you can imagine how we can apply this next week to help to look for uh, markers or gene expression data that might be differentiating subsets of the patients uh, within the Michael J. Fox Foundation data set. I guess the last thing that I'll show here is uh, within this whole workflow, you know, things like functional characterization, where you can see, um, <clears throat> you know, a whole slew of different uh, lists, things like uh, things that are highly expressed in uh, each of the different factors, things that were um, also not in this particular analysis, but available, or things that are 
uh, you know, enriched for uh, various uh, Go uh, terms and uh, also enriched in basically using things like k-means clustering. So uh, I'm going to pause there. I think that gives you a pretty good feel for uh, kind of how the data can flow from transport into Spotfire uh, in its kind of most um, simplistic way, uh, as well as in the uh, in terms of a template, and finally, in the context of a fully worked up gene expression analysis template like uh, Omics Office Expression Explorer. Um, I guess I'll pause there and see, uh, we can take questions at the end if there are any. Um, but that, that's about what I was hoping to cover today. Yep. Thanks, Dan. Um, anybody have any questions now? I'm happy to, to open it up. Um, you can either type it in the question window or raise your hand, and I'll open up your mic and you can ask. And otherwise, we will have a um, we'll have it open up again at the end of this the last session. Okay. Well, thanks, Dan. Sure. Okay, so our uh, second presentation this morning uh, is going to be uh, from uh, IOinformatics, um, and we're going to start with an introduction by Raj Martin and then move to Jason Eshelman. And so, uh, Raj, I am unmuting you, and I will turn the presentation over to you. Okay, thanks uh, very much. Can I get a quick confirmation? Can you hear me? Yes, sounds, sounds good, and you okay, should have control. I appreciate that. I'm going to get going here. Are we seeing the presentation? I want to be sure I'm showing the right screen. I see only a blue screen with a calendar. Okay, looks like maybe I've gotten the wrong one. Let's get that going. And now we see your contacts. Let's see. How about now? Yes, that looks like a presentation. Very good. Okay, great. Appreciate that. So, uh, good morning, everyone. Appreciate uh, appreciate you joining us. Uh, my name is Raj Martin with Iowa Informatics. We're very excited to be working with the Transmart community. Uh, today, we're going to give you a brief introduction on how IOI can help uh, simplify and streamline the process of getting data into Transmart. Uh, we're going to show you some reusable tools and pipelines uh, that can provide solutions to the kind of integration challenges that we saw earlier in the week. I think uh, Wegu and Venkata and others showed us some challenges. Uh, and as well, thanks very much to Daniel for that uh, that, that great demo of Spotfire. Uh, along those lines, to give a little context, uh, Dan, Daniel was showing some examples of how you can analyze data coming out of Transmart. Uh, so what we're going to do here is kind of look at the flip side, talk a little bit about how we can make it easier to get data into uh, Transmart. I've got just a few brief slides here. Uh, I'll try to go through them quickly because I really want to emphasize the, the demo with our Director of Informatics, uh, Dr. Jason Eshelman. Um, along those lines, I'll remind everybody again, all these, all these uh, uh, presentations are being uh, recorded, so um, uh, you can always come back and look later. And we invite uh, further contact and communication both during and after the datathon. You see our email addresses uh, there on the slide. So with that being said, let's let's move on. Uh, as you can see here, IOI has been around the block. Uh, we've been in the semantic integration business for well over a decade have a long history of uh, active participation in the community, uh, including industry working groups and uh, global standards organizations. As well, you can see here we have uh, significant experience in the translational space. Uh, we've delivered numerous uh, large production deployments in a variety of settings.
Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about our solutions. Uh, we offer services uh, as well as software, in particular our sentient server uh, suite of software products and solutions. Uh, these, these products are purpose-built to help simplify data integration. Uh, they bring numerous benefits. You can read them here. Uh, and in particular, you know, we want to focus on benefits related to getting data into Transmart. Uh, one other thing I'll mention is, you know, we're very much focused on packaged, reusable solutions, not one-off solutions, but uh, uh, creating solutions that are reusable. All right, moving on to a little bit more detail, uh, we're going to take a, a look here at one of our core products known as Knowledge Explorer. That's actually what uh, Jason will be demoing in just a few minutes. Uh, Knowledge Explorer, it's an ideal tool for the kinds of tasks uh, required to get data clean and connected uh, using semantic methods. Uh, and again, specifically, it's a great tool for getting data into Transmart. Uh, only thing I'll point out here is uh, I'll note the references to uh, open standards, uh, RDF, Sparkle, and so on. Uh, Knowledge Explorer will work with a a variety of standard formats, both in terms of bringing data in and as well it supports uh, numerous standard formats for taking data out. And again, here we're focused on taking data out of Knowledge Explorer and getting it into Transmart. Okay, let's look at a typical use case with Knowledge Explorer. Uh, here in the left column we have a very common example with uh, multiple types of incoming data. Uh, in this case, we're, we're displaying a geo data set, a flat file in the upper left corner. Uh, in, the, in the middle, uh, another semantic data set. And then finally, in the lower left, uh, we have a, a spreadsheet. So a very common example. Uh, we bring those into Knowledge Explorer and use what we call mappers to link and connect all of that data into uh, a, co a coherent semantic format. So that's really setting us up for the next step, which is probably the one most everyone here is most interested in. We're all about Transmart here, so let's talk about uh, bringing data into Transmart. Uh, once the data is clean and connected, it's easy to move it in. Uh, one of the most important things to note here are automated pipelines and workflows. We have an example of that sort of in the middle of this diagram here. Uh, standard pipelines and workflows for bringing data into uh, Transmart. So that's, you know, that's great for simplifying the process, both uh, in terms of reducing the amount of time required as well as manual labor involved in bringing data in. And then obviously on the, on the right hand side here, we, I think everybody knows about all the great benefits of once the data is in Transmart, you get all the, the benefits of Transmart and then even further tools on downstream like we've seen today, Spotfire. Uh, quick, quick side note here, this is unrelated to what we're going to be doing today, but uh, I just want to take a moment to introduce you to one of our recent contributions to the community. Uh, we're pretty happy with this. It's our Transmart Docker container. If you're not familiar with Docker, uh, don't worry about that. The, the main thing to take away here is that Docker is a technology that provides a really slick way uh, to get a full Transmart installation up and running, uh, including all of the associated components, the web server, the Postgres database, it's all built in. I'll point out that Docker is not an IOI technology, it's, uh, it's public open source. In fact, this container is freely available to the community. Uh, we encourage and invite you to check it out. Uh, there's the web link there, uh, and you're welcome to uh, take a look. That's a great way to get uh, get a Transmart installation up and running in literally minutes. Okay, that was a little side note. Let's get, get going with our demo here. Again, that's the important part. Uh, what we've got here is a set of the high-level steps that we're going to be looking at. And in particular, today we're going to be focused on what I've circled uh, here, the, the, the steps prior, uh, identifying inconsistencies in the data, maybe improving those with some public ontologies, cleaning it up, and getting it ready to get into Transmart. Uh, we have a, an example here that may be very familiar to many of you. You've seen, we, we, we've tried to pick a very simple case, but it, it, it really illustrates some of the problems that you may have encountered. 
Uh, here on the left, you can see a couple of studies, and in particular, we have one where gender is, uh, we, are, we have a, a, a data type gender with values of F and M, but look at the study down below. That study has sex with female and ma male, and this results in the problems that you see here uh, in the graphs that are displayed, where really those should all be the same. Uh, as far as Transmart's concerned, they're, they're two different things, and we need to fix that. So that's what we're going to be uh, looking at today. Um, actually, with that said, I've jumped ahead to my closing slide. With that said, I'll turn it over to uh, I'll turn it over to uh, Dr. Jason Eshelman for a for hands-on demo. Jason, are you are you there? I am here. Can everybody hear me, or can anyone hear me? Can anyone hear me? I can. Okay, wonderful. Uh, yes, you can hear me. I'm fine. going to work on the assumption that. Sorry, you're good. Okay, I'll work on the assumption that everybody in the world can, build, can hear me. And, then. and you um, should have a uh, control the screen. Yeah. Yep. And my screen should be up and running. And what you should see right here is an uh, example of our Knowledge Explorer. Uh, we're using the Knowledge Explorer as uh, this, a. Uh, okay. All right, it's, it's fine. It just came up. Thank you. Okay. We're using the Knowledge Explorer as um, a, a middle ground for a staging database. Um, a, a little bit more about sort of the approach that we take at IO Informatics to data integration. Um, rather than doing a whole lot of philosophizing about how the data is going to be structured in the end, uh, we let people back the dump truck up in front, pour it out, and put something together uh, in a, a staging model very, very quickly that allows us to do quite a bit of what I'm about to show you. Um, I'm going to be working with a uh, couple of geo data sets that we took from the geo family soft files. That's a flat file format um, here that if anybody has worked with trying to get this in, um, it can be a little bit daunting because they are large files. Um, the structure of them is uh, Standardized to some degree, except the content is not standardized enough that uh, um, that you can just take one and and look at it and assume that all of them are going to be the same. Um, that's that's perfectly reasonable because um, the contents of all studies are not the same. But while we can get value from a single gene expression uh, study, here is one of the neurodegenerative studies I work with. Um, we get a lot more value if we can horizontally look across uh, many studies, which is what Transmart allows us to do. But we have to get the data there first. And uh, going from our flat file to the uh, formats that the, that the kettle loader can read, which are um, here pretty, uh, uh, pretty well structured here, um, there are uh, quite a few things that can go wrong in, in that. Um, so what we do, and I'm not showing it here, but we have a pipeline that uses just a couple of reusable mappers that takes uh, the data and it triplifies it, making it into a, a semantic database, and we load several studies in there all the time. Um, we have here is data sets. If I can look here, we have a little bit of an ontology of the data that we brought in, and we have two data sets here, two of the neurodegenerative, um, also two studies on melanoma. Um, we uh, want to make a point that this is a, a generalized model that we can use um, you know, for, for studies of, of different nature, um, and actually, it, it works for uh, things that are not geodata sets uh, quite easily as well. Um, once we get the data in, uh, we can take a look at it and start working with it. So here is uh, a couple of those data sets here, um, represented as these icons. And the data sets themselves, uh, we can see that one of the properties is the title. Um, in our staging model, we can see easily the metadata about it, um, browsing here, and see that we've got quite a bit of metadata. And we brought in the metadata um, from uh, both of those studies side by side. Um, a study itself can be extended out, in fact, it is extended out to um, a number of samples. And those samples here, represented in this case by our little uh, person icon um, themselves have metadata 
that we can take a look at. And this is where we start getting into something that's um, a little bit uh, interesting here is that the metadata that you have from study to study, uh, especially from sample to sample, gets to be, um, we start running into some of those uh, irregularities um, between those uh, bits here. Now I'm, I'm browsing, I'm actually draw, br dragging in some layouts that I have saved here. Uh, we are working live with our back end triple store, um, but to save you from watching me do some mouse clicking and moving around, um, we've determined that my hand is a little bit too busy for a live demo, so we're forcing me to, uh, um, to use the, the, uh, the, the layouts. The layouts are nice because you can share them with other people as well after you've taken a look at your data. Um, say this is exactly what I was looking at in my triple store. Uh, here you go, it, you know, down to the corner of the screen that it's in. Um, let's take a look at some of those characteristics that we have here. Uh, not all of them are, are shown, but um, a few of them, the sample characteristics, uh, sample description, um, source name, and I'm going to draw attention again to that point that um, uh, Raj brought up that we start seeing some inconsistencies here just between two different studies. Um, and it's an inconsistency that you might say, well, that's uh, somewhat trivial um, and, and that we can deal with it, but it's not trivial in the sense that um, when you get it in the downstream application, uh, the downstream application needs to be told uh, af either after the fact that gender and sex is the same way, and it needs to be told that for every pair of, of, of uh, um, cases of, of studies where that's the same thing. I'll, I'll spare you the molecular anthropologist background where in fact gender and sex um, you know, shouldn't be equated, but really for the purpose of these studies, they should have been. Um, this is taking a look at the metadata sample. I want to show you that we can also take a look here at the actual results here in our staging area. Um, in this case, we have uh, a few of the many thousands of results here, and we use this uh, reusable model here of a result, uh, and a result at minimum uh, consisting of what was measured, in this case, um, a gene on a gene chip, and the particular value of it. Um, um, at, at the core here, what we've done is taking a model where we have uh, a conceptually a study, conceptually a subject or sample, and conceptually a result, and there's a number of results. And as best we found, uh, working with a wide variety of data, everything uh, can be uh, massaged rather easily into this model um, to, to take a look at it. And this staging at, uh, environment here is really quite queryable. Um, I won't uh, show you that uh, just now, but we could even ask the question for a particular study, what are all of the types of characteristics that we have so that we can put those side by side with the characteristics um, of, of another uh, um, study to take a look at. Now, uh, we mentioned that issue of, of normalization so that we could get from um, here to the, the, the uh, flat file to the structured and then uh, feed that uh, easily into um, uh, Transmart. We believe that doing that normalization at this point um, is a great time to do it. And it, we can look across our studies uh, before we've loaded them to do that. And one of the things that we can do um, spares the time of creating uh, your ontology each and every time for your particular studies is you reuse things from the public uh, uh, sector, ontologies that have already been developed for uh, studies on, and vocabularies that have already been developed that are available that we can drop in to the same environment that we have our studies and take a look at um, uh, all of those um, pieces. We um, can do that in a few ways. We can extend the platform out. Um, in this case, I'm going to extend it beyond the, the um, probes we have here. I'm going to go down to um, see that we have uh, the uh, reference on the chip that it was on and also here um, uh, another uh, data set that was also using the same probes, um, in this case the Biota RDF project, that we can um, go out and now I'm connecting to a remote data site and see um, what we have on um, 
that from bio to RDF if their server is actually up and running, which um, didn't check this morning. Oh, there we go. Uh, but we can augment the data vertically from another source. Um, and in addition, we can uh, normalize it with a single source. I'm going to clear this off um, here. We're going to just make this a little bit larger in this case. And what do I mean by that? Well, in this case, we're working with the uh, NCI thesauri. It's, it's a nice big way of taking that vocabulary that we might um, have some questions about and seeing how other people have already uh, done this. So we run a query on those characteristics and the results of that query is that we actually found um, that, that sex had been dealt with. Um, and sex had been dealt with uh, in the case where we had found um, a synonymous relationship here with the preferred and the uh, um, alternate synonym in that case with uh, two states there which also had been shown with some uh, rather uh, 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 regularly found uh, states in there. So, so somebody else had already done this work for us of normalizing it and placed it into an ontology um, that you could then import. This uh, allows for a regular query that we have our workflow engine do after the fact um, that will query your data, align it with your ontology, and create an output file that then is, is read um, after that fact. Um, we don't have to use this ontology as well. We see we've got a semantic type in here that would link to another ontology. Um, I'm only suggesting this in CI thesaurus is one of the possibilities. There's also an experimental factor ontology. Um, there's quite a few of them. It allows you to be flexible about this uh, in which one you decide, but I, I think that there's quite a bit of, of value in um, taking an ontology and using it across a number of studies instead of trying to reinvent the wheel every single time. Uh, when you reinvent the wheel every single time, every once in a while it comes out square or rectangular um, and those aren't going to ro roll very well and they're not going to fit together that well. Um, this again is something that um, I'm showing here the two neurodegenerative studies, but uh, as well here uh, the exact same model for a couple of, of uh, studies on um, uh, melanoma that I'm, I'm told I should pay a lot more attention to every time I go and see my dermatologist um, for the family history. Okay, let's take a look here back at what we've done. Um, we've taken a very, very flexible model and we've taken our dump truck and we've put in the studies uh, rapidly, giving them some structure, structure there. Uh, we brought it in in a lossless manner um, with the set of, of very basic mappers that gives us uh, access in an environment to um, a number of standard vocabularies, public ontologies and public data sets to extend this um, both vertically to add more detail to the studies that are all already quite detailed, but also connecting them horizontally by normalizing across those. And this really makes our downstream um, applications a whole lot better because we've done that normalization, we've done those, those parts that are really necessary to be able to control uh, our comparisons from one study to another, make sure that we're actually comparing uh, apples to apples, but giving us a big, big, big basket of apples to, to, start, um, to start looking at. And some of those apples are hopefully going to taste really good and give some people some nice scientific results. Raj? Hand it back to Raj. Hey, I'm back. I'm just going to uh, take us through here to the end, my last slide. And uh, again, we very much appreciate the uh, very much appreciate this opportunity. And uh, let's see, it says I'm not showing my screen. Hopefully you're seeing my last slide there, but uh, we appreciate that from from Jason. And just to sort of wrap up. Uh, you know, again, I'll mention the, the bottom line here is we're here to help make it easier for you to get data clean and connected and uh, into Transmart. And we really look forward to doing that. And then, of course, once the data is in, in Transmart, 
Uh, you've seen a, a great example of, of what you can do with it on the on the downstream side, Spotfire and all the, the rest of the great uh, analytic applications that are out there. So again, thanks very much. Okay, thank you guys. Um, open it up now to questions for the IOINFORMATICS team. Again, you can type a question into the question window or raise your hand and I'll open up your mic. Or for either Spotfire, either Perkinomer or IOINFORMATICS. Um, both, both groups will be present next week during the datathon. These tools will be available. Uh, so um, again, we encourage you to, um, you know, if you have questions, certainly you can reach out to, to these, to either team. Uh, and uh, hopefully next week you'll have a chance to actually use the tools. So I'd like to, to thank um, both IOINFORMATICS and uh, Perkinomer for the presentations today. Um, and also thank them for their support, both our members of the, the foundation. Uh, I'd also like to mention our Datathon sponsors, which is Perkinomer is our platinum sponsor, Thomson Reuters, uh, silver sponsor, and also our host next week uh, and IDBS dinner sponsorships. This is helping us um, invite and, and uh, support some of the academics who are coming to the uh, to Datathon next week. Uh, finally, this was the fourth in the series. This recording will be posted along with the others, which are already up on the website. And so if you'd like to review the materials or if you'd like to um, uh, have some of your colleagues look at it before next week, these will be uh, on the website <clears throat> and will stay there. Uh, and also there are hotel rooms uh, still available, I believe. And so please hurry and get your reservations in. Uh, one other final reminder, if you haven't, submitted your applications for access to the data sets that we're going to use. Please get that taken care of today. Uh, so with that, I want to thank everyone uh, and for their participation and um, 